Okay, so hi again and welcome. For today, what we are going to do is we are going to proceed to the fifth lesson of our Kalimba mini series or mini course. And our lesson for today is one that has been asked a lot. And this is about the chords, your Kalimba chords. So what is a chord? How do you play it? Or what are the ways that you can play the chords? So by definition, a chord is it's a group of typically three or more notes sounded together as a basis of harmony. Okay, name a chord that you want to play. Example, C major, right? Um, letter C. Now look for your letter C. We have one here, one here, and another there. So, starting here, what are the two letters that is higher than it? There you go. So for C, we have C, E, and G. And if you strum them together, you have your C chord. See? That's why, oh, whoever uh, arranged this is very, it's well thought of. Example, you want to play the G. Play G. Look for G on your kalimba and look at the two letters that are higher from it on the same side. So, look for the letter then check out the two keys that are beside that are higher beside it so that's g b and d stroke it you have your g chord what if example you're trying to follow a song but the chords doesn't seem right like example you're gonna see e minor seven but it doesn't have the sound of it. That's where the internet comes in. You can always go online, type the key that you're checking out, or the chord, type the chord that you're checking out, so example, E minor 7, then always add the word piano. Because if you do, the results usually would also show the keys already so you don't have to really know the placement the finger placement of the piano because the letters would already show up and that's what i do in an instance that you encounter a chord that you're not sure of you can always do that i will show you something that um would help you like especially if you're a beginner and Maybe you're wondering like, why do some covers of songs go like this? Why is there, why are, I thought it's all in a, all on the same area, but why are they playing on the other side too? Basically, it's just their way of being creative as to playing the chords. And you can be creative too, because we are going to learn them. Okay, now check it out. If you're gonna notice, some people play a chord like this, right? But you can also play it by pressing them one by one like this. Or you can play it in different patterns. Or strum it, then pluck it. Now, if you're gonna notice, let's just use the C chord because that's what we have right here. C. E, G, right? You also have another set right here. C, E, G. So, what will happen if you strum the same letters of the same chord together? Listen to this. 
it sounds fuller, right? As compared to this one, look. Now, so that's why some people play it like this. Or, or, So basically, you can play around with these uh, keys as long as they are inside your chord. When I started, my favorite thing to do is when I end the song in a C, I would run it up here and end with the highest C right there. So example. Think of it as they're still in the same group. So example, your F, A, C. So your F. You have A. We don't have a lower A, but you have a lower C. So, C. As compared to this one, listen. So as compared to this one, here, this is what it sounds like if you add the lower one. It's more full, right? So what I'm trying to say is that you can just simply play around with it. Look at the three keys. Now look at your kalimba. What other areas can you find the same three keys? See? Right there. And you can just put, make a combination of them. Okay, so that's the thing about your kalimba. It's an open box in a sense that you don't have to be strict to yourself. That you just need to stay within these keys. Because you can learn to play along with it. And that's actually what makes it fun also. Experiment on it. Like add on those other notes. And you're gonna notice that as you try to do that, there's a part of you that would be in tune with your creative side that you never knew existed, right? So yeah, grab your kalimba, try to make some chords, try to play them. This would be more effective if you have already learned how to tune your kalimba because you want your kalimba to be in tune to what key you're using, right? That's it for this lesson for today. I will see you again next Tuesday. Happy Tuesday <laughs> for our lesson number six, which is the apps itself. Now that you have chosen which kalimba you want, you have learned how to tune your kalimba, you have learned of reading the kalimba works for you, then you also have learned how to read the, kal the kalimba notes or notations or tablatures. And then again today we have learned, so we have learned what a scale is, how do you change your key, like what does it look like and you have also learned today what a chord is and how do you play it and ways that you can be creative about it okay so i'll see you on our next episode please do continue because you have already reached this much it's all gonna be worth it and you are going to be that kalimba player who you want to be so just push on continue and you know what enjoy the whole process that's what really matters anyway okay so god bless you and may he keep you may his favor and his love shine upon you until we see each other again okay all right see you guys
Okay, let's try the one of Bob Dylan. <gasps> Ooh, now here, here is the exact example of what I'm trying to say. Look at the chords. E, G sharp, C sharp.